Happy New Year. Uh, as we wait for this to get going, we've had a, a wild year. Uh, certainly the energy and the mood is a little different uh, than it was last year. But I think this is actually a very, very good thing. As much as it's painful for some of us, these bear markets are when the best things get built. You know, when the markets are when Lambo, when mooning, uh, you know, people become irrational, the best behavior kind of dissipates, people focusing and getting great things built tends not to happen. So, you know, 2019 is a great potential year. Amazing things are going to get built. I think we've had our Netscape moment. I think that we're going to see dApps get built this year that hit a million users a month, and that's what the market really needs. No more theoretical, we can do this, we can do that, but like time to start showing it, time, time to start doing it, time to start proving it. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm here to take us, uh, I guess, back in time a little bit um, to uh, what has been kind of the primary roller coaster of our industry. Uh, so let's start with Japan. Satoshi Nakamoto, the creators of Bitcoin, chose a Japanese name. You know, this story kind of all begins in Japan. And it's something the Japanese should be very proud of. You know, they can certainly make the argument that, Japanese, that Bitcoin is a Japanese byproduct, that it was born out of Japan, at least our creators chose to make it look that way. Um, but fast forward a little ways, we obviously had a major problem. Probably the main problem with Bitcoin that has affected the reputation of our industry. You know, when people are like, oh no, Bitcoin's not safe, Bitcoin's a problem, something for any of us that's been around for a long time. This was the main eyesore. This was the thing that caused us as an industry to lose most of our credibility. You know, this was our Enron. This was our Bernie Madoff. You know, this was that story that has plagued our industry reputationally, you know, for a very long time. You know, seven, you know, three quarters of a million Bitcoin stolen. That number might even be north of a million. The fact that that isn't even entirely known and with perfect facts and figures is a rather concerning issue. And when this failed, it was put into bankruptcy, uh, a bankruptcy for liquidation. And that was five years ago, and this story is still not finished. Obviously, tens of thousands of people's lives affected. You know, many people's have, people have lost their homes. Uh, there, I mean, there's plenty of sad stories. Anyone in the audience have coins at Mt. Gox? Few old timers. <laughs> but Mt. Gox had a million users. I mean, it, it was the main exchange that we all relied on, and obviously it was not run as it was needed. And Bitcoin uh, obviously lost a lot of value. We, you know, we were on, the, the industry was on its way to $1,000, and the first, like our 2018 experience of a massive down market was largely triggered. This first big one in 2013 and then 2014 was largely triggered by Mt. Gox. It set back the industry's development by probably a year or two, and it's still, affects us today. Now, in reality, we probably weren't ready and we needed that year or two to continue to build the bridges, the roads, and the tunnels, and the wonderful infrastructure many of you in the room have built. So where are we today, five years later? It's still in a bankruptcy proceeding, except for one major thing has changed. The courts have decided that this shouldn't be a liquidation any longer. It's now in a state of civil rehabilitation. And, uh, 201,000 of the Bitcoins have been found. There's still a large amount of Bitcoin missing. And about 25,000 creditors have filed claims to be able to recover you know, some of their lost money. Some really good things, though, have come of this. One is because Japan had to learn about Bitcoin, not because of Satoshi Nakamoto in name, but because of Mt. Gox, they had to learn about Bitcoin for the wrong reasons. But they, as regulators and as a government, were forced to learn what Bitcoin is faster and first, you know, in front of the rest of the world. And some really wonderful things came of it. Bitcoin was made legal tender in Japan. This is something that most people don't follow. Japan is one of the leading Bitcoin markets in the world as a result of this. And at the time that the bankruptcy trustee was selling a bunch of Bitcoin, 
everybody was going, no, 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 no. But in retrospect, he was selling Bitcoin at a very high price relative today. So it was actually a very good move for creditors. You know, one of those things is you don't know whether or not something is a good or a bad thing until you have the benefit of hindsight. At the time, something horrible may happen. You go, oh, this is the worst day of my life. And then a few years later, you're like, actually, that was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Or you might have that day where something amazing happens. You're like, this is the greatest day of my life. And a year later, you're like, oh, wow, I didn't see the, you know, the law of un unintended consequences. Some, some really good things did come of this. So if you're a creditor, there are some things you need to know. The claims that you filed historically are essentially no longer valid. They've been voided because the bankruptcy process has gone from a liquidation to a rehabilitation. So you need to refile your claim. If you didn't file your claim previously and you have lost Bitcoins you were a, or US dollars, you know, now is the time to go do that. Your filing needs to be in by Valentine's Day. Interesting date. Uh, so make sure you submit that claim. You know, make sure to join one of the creditor pools. Make sure to get involved because this is uh, hopefully, you know, we're reaching the, uh, we're nearing the finish line where this story can come to an end, where creditors can get what is owed to them. There's about $1.3 billion of uh, assets being held for creditors. In the previous bankruptcy proceeding, the courts had to use a methodology to determine what creditors are owed, and they used what hedge funds and most of the financial world uses, which is what's called mark-to-market, and they mark-to-market it, it at about $400 a coin, which is obviously not a very good thing for creditors today. You know, uh, the creditor community, and I'm just supporting the creditor efforts and the community's efforts to get the best possible resolution here, the best possible outcome. Uh, I'm just helping support the community of creditors and a lot of the creditors have all come together now trying to speak with one voice so that this process can be resolved in the best way possible as soon as possible. And uh, you know, as one of those things, obviously creditors deserve more than $400 of Bitcoin. They deserve everything that is there, all $1.3 billion, all of those Bitcoins and all of that cash should go to the creditors. They're still not gonna be made whole. There's also an opportunity to aggressively pursue the lost funds. You know, there are still things that can be done from a recovery effort to try and recover as much of that money, you know, as possible. There is also an opportunity to relaunch the exchange and for creditors to benefit from that as well. Our goal, you know, in our conversations as the call it creditor community is to try and get everyone, our goal is to get everyone 100% of what they lost back. Now, obviously that's setting the bar as high as one possibly can, you know, extraordinarily high, but what if? What if creditors ended up getting everything back? What if Enron had a happy ending? and everyone was made whole. What kind of story, what kind of message would that send to the world? What, how would that represent us as an industry? It's one of those things that would show everything that Bitcoin is different. You know, when the global financial system, you know, crashed in 2008, governments had to step in and bail us out or bail them out. You know, this is one of those opportunities where we can demonstrate that the philosophy and the community of the crypto community is such that we can have radically different outcomes. And so uh, if you want to find out anything else, again, go check out the, um, uh, the various creditor pools that are out there. You can also go to Gox Rising and get informed, get involved, you know, let's bring it back. Bring it back again. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to have a little fun there. Um, please uh, reach out to anybody you know that had something at Gox. The goal here is to try and create the best possible outcome for everyone. Bring it back.